the urban apocalypse has arrived. Not the zombie one in which the undead chase the living down the street, but something for American blacks far more immediate and threatening. Our public education, our public safety, our public decorum indicators had plunged below anything any of us would have encountered or expected. I can recall as a member of Generation X being raised in a black America where dignity, hard work, quote, home training, i.e. the set of values you receive from your parents or guardians, were given. Now granted, they were starting to slip away, but nothing like we're seeing today. I anticipate within the next 10 to 20 years, something I call the Great Separation will become standard policy. The Great Separation isn't a separation between blacks and whites, but rather between black people who support a civilized way of life and those who don't. We've already seen that whenever we're able to rub together more than two nickels, we move out of the hood. Well, the hood has become increasingly the mainstream for black America. And what that means is that a level of incivility, insecurity, and insanity becomes what most of us can expect when surrounded by large numbers of persons with this mindset. The Great Separation says that black people with the same zeal that we promote a desegregation will say that we simply cannot live among certain members of our community and the urban apocalypse will force this great separation. This isn't something that white folks, the White House, the Governor's Mansion, nor the Mayor's Office will be able to help us with. No one can help us with the civility and the insecurity we're experiencing except ourselves. I mean, these deficits are things that no one has a remote control, magic wand, or social program to solve. And as I look toward the future, quite frankly, given the world in which I was raised, it's bleak. But I do take hope that, again, in the blogosphere, on YouTube, and elsewhere, more members of my generation and the generation that preceded us, and even those who come behind us, increasingly are rising in opposition to what we know is uncivilized and unsustainable behavior. We can't accept people who will just shoot down other people just because they feel like it. We can't accept people who will yell, scream, and curse as if that's the only way they know how to communicate. We can't accept public schools filled with persons with whom a postmodern education seems to be wasted. You know, we can't blame other people from fleeing around us when we quietly sit like hostages and endure an environment that is intolerable. The urban apocalypse isn't something I made up. In fact, the urban apocalypse has been going on for a while. It's just that now our shame and in some cases, legitimate fear is being replaced by people who are saying that we have got to call the deadly spade a spade. The urban apocalypse means that you can't have who I call zombies determining the course of your community. You cannot have thugs I call chocolate clansmen, women who will just serially produce children without any inkling as to how they will provide for them or what type of examples and what type of development they will place before them. These can't be your decision makers. And too often, apologists on high are willing to try to placate folks like these with bribe money in the form of a never-ending stream of social programs and taxpayers who can barely afford to take care of themselves, let alone anybody else. And this isn't Republican Party mantra. Believe me, the urban apocalypse is something that distant white folks are not the authors of. If you can tell me that there's a white man hip enough to try to create what we see on our streets every day, I shake his hand. Because we took a situation that was already bad and we decided that improving it wasn't the answer, but somehow 
through twisted, convoluted thinking that still escapes me, worsening the situation was. So here we stand, in 2013, dying more, reading less, and evolving into something that is literally frightening to behold. I remember when President Obama, whom I didn't vote for the first nor second time, was first elected. And white commentators were saying that just yes, now we're going to see young black men try to emulate him. Well, folks, two terms down the road, do you see any large number of young black men in our battle flag urban centers trying to imitate President Obama? Are they wearing suits? Are they reading books? Are they trying to advance in the mainstream culture? No. The urban apocalypse puts the, the lie to the type of symbolic remedies that perhaps pacified past generations. Black faces in high places are no longer enough of a placebo to chill out the masses. The anger, the ignorance, the evil that we're choking on cannot be solved by one black president and actually biracial president or a black first family. It can't happen. You know, we're, we're beyond even the symbolic remedies of yesteryear. And the urban apocalypse, which we see played out before us on our streets, in what passes for urban culture, on arrest dockets, even in the Centers for Disease Control as the violence became a public health issue, it ultimately will erase every decent landmark and every worthy milestone that our, our particular community has established. And guess what? We'll deserve it. It'll be our fault if we let it happen. I've never seen any other group of people embrace the worst among them and uphold them as a state of the art. Why would we be any different? Why should we hold close to our bosom people who refuse to learn, refuse to be even polite in public, and in some cases refuse to even respect not just property, but life itself? and will murder and abort with the type of abandon most people reserve for choosing a channel on the remote control. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't even feel sorry for the people who aren't like this who are being afflicted. We have failed for any number of reasons to just look this problem squarely in the eye not worry about whether some white supremacist somewhere can say, see, this matches my theory about those people all the time. We refuse to look this problem in the eye, and it has grown, and it has metastasized, and it will probably devour what we know to be black in America today. I'm not sad about it. I'm not remorseful, because I understand that in an urban apocalypse where the stakeholders refuse to mobilize against the vandals. That's the only outcome that could happen. So should black America dissolve? Should the great separation happen? And then instead of, quote, a black America, you will have several black Americas, one filled with zombies, chocolate clansmen, popcorn pregnancy practitioners, and others, and the other filled with people who respect themselves and are striving mightily to improve their lot in life, I'm fine with that. Because an urban apocalypse where you give in to the least common denominator, which in this instance means a living death, the likes of which we can only look towards science fiction or the horror industry to even imagine, I'd gladly choose the world of great separation where civilized blacks part company from uncivilized blacks as a solution to the urban apocalypse. You know, we didn't create it. We didn't have a secret ballot where we said, well, guess what? We're going to make most of our kids fatherless 
and most of them ignorant, and a percentage of them violent, and an even larger percentage just rude and unmannerly. And that's going to be our great statement to our time in America. I, I don't remember. I didn't get that menu. Uh, pardon me. I didn't get that memo. Or maybe it is a menu. You know, the choice between a buffet that actually will make you fat and happy and a buffet that will actually make you dead. But at any rate, I didn't get the memo. Nobody mailed it to me. Didn't get the email. Didn't get the download. Didn't get the text message. Black folks didn't vote for all this chaos. But with that said, we also did not mobilize ourselves against it. You know, you can't wait for a handful of white guys and white sheets or a bad police officer to decide now's the time to mobilize. On our west coast, not only do we have, as I say, the zombies among us to contend with, but we also have who a, friend, a Facebook friend of mine called Carmel Klansmen, Latino gangbangers here illegally who are targeting American blacks for execution. See folks, this situation is getting far more com complicated than the old school white versus black mantra. We have allowed our decline to be a red carpet for people outside our community and inside it to treat us literally like targets. So. I say this without a hint of remorse. I can actually say that I'm glad that the people who raised me, who maintained their dignity against all odds, I'm glad they're not here to see this. I can remember my grandmother and her friends living inside their houses, locked behind burglar bars and steel security doors, not against the impending doom of some distant clansman, but against some zombie some crackhead, some burglar, or stray bullets, or some home invader who would look like them. I'm glad they're not here to see this. So the urban apocalypse is upon us. It has been upon us for roughly 20 years, I would say at least since the advent of crack cocaine. And what we do or don't do is fine by me. As for myself, I don't accept the urban apocalypse. I have no remorse for those who are afflicted, and I don't even have sympathy for those who aren't. When we organize a movement with the same zeal as desegregation and the same intensity as the classic black nationalism that said that we needed to control our economy, have black policemen, have black businesses, when we decide to fight the urban apocalypse the way we fought other challenges, either as mainstream activists or nationalists, then maybe I can find some remorse. But until then, I will keep the zombies at bay in my life, and I hope that you will do the same.